This is a level two practice paper from City and Girls, part A. You can't use a calculator for this part. It's worth 15 marks in total. So we'll look at each question one by one. Question number one is, what is two thirds as a percentage? Give your answer rounded to two decimal places. Two thirds is two divided by three, which is 0 0.666. So six is recurring. And as a percentage, this is 66.666 and so on. So we need to round this to two decimal places to have two digits after the decimal point. And because this is a six, this one in front of it will become a seven. So 66.67%. Question number two, what is 14% of 200? So we'll break 14% down into 10% and then 1% and so on. So 10% of 200 is one tenth of it. So 200 divided by 10 gives us 20. 1% of 200 is one hundredth of it. So 200 divided by 100 gives us two, knocking off the two zeros. And another 3% we need of 200, so three lots of 1%, which is equal to 2. There we have it. So 3 times 2 is 6. So 10% and 1% and 3% makes 14%. And 20 and 2 and 6 makes 28. So 14% of 200 is equal to 28. In this third question, we've got to add two and a half to three and three quarters. So if we add the whole numbers first, two and three gives us five. Then we have one half and three quarters. So one half looks like this and three quarters. Looks like this. So half here, and this other half makes a whole. So this now becomes a six. And we've got quarter left. So six and quarter, which is option C. Question number four What is 75 as a fraction of 125? Give your answer in its simplest form. So 75 out of 125. Now, I can see that both 75 and 125 are multiples of 25. So, three lots of 25 fit into 75, and five lots of 25 fit into 125. If you didn't spot that 75 and 125 are multiples of 25, maybe you spotted that they're multiples of 5 because they both end in 5s. So you could have done it that way as well, and the end result would still be the same. Now we've got question number five. A half, take away two sevens. Give your answer in simplest form. So we're, we're going to convert them to two fractions with a common denominator. So two and seven, I'm going to put 14. So to get from 2 to 14, I multiplied by 7, so I must do the same for the top number. To get from 7 to 14, I multiplied by 2, so I need to do the same thing here. 2 times 2 is 4. So we subtract in. 7 take away 4 is 3. 
So 3 over 14. And we can't simplify it any further. Because if I divide 14 by 3, it's not going to give me a whole number. Now we've got in brackets 8 out of 2 times 6, all squared. So this is a fit mass or bod mass question. So we're going to go with brackets first. So within the brackets, we've got addition and multiplication. And we know that multiplication comes before addition. So we're going to do 2 times 6, which is 12. So 8 at 12, all squared. Now again, within the brackets, we've got 8 and 12, which is 20, all squared. So 20 squared means 20 times 20. And you could do a column method, but I'll share a very quick method here. 2 times 2 is 4. Add the two zeros. This is 400. If you use the column method, you go 0 times 0 is 0. 0 times 2 is 0. Then put a 0 down. 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 2 is 4. And that gives us again 400. In question number seven, what is the value of 3AB when A is equal to 5 and B is equal to 6? So three lots of AB. So there is no operation that you can see in here between 3A and B, which means it's multiplication. So three lots of A is 5 and B is 6. Could do them in whichever order you want so you might multiply three and five first or five and six first and then by three so i'll just take them in order three times five is 15 times six six lots of five is 30 zero down and three carried over six times one is six add the three gives us 9, so the answer is 90. We've got to calculate the size of angle A, and as you can see, angle A is in a triangle. We know this is 80 and this is 30, and we need to figure out what's the value of angle A. We know that in total, all three angles of the triangle will be 180, so we've got 80 already, and the 30, that gives us 110. So 180, take away 110, leaves us with 70. Question number nine, 900 add 1,500 divided by 300 equals what? Again, we've got two operations and we need to bear in mind the order of operations here, which is bit mass or bot mass. And this tells us that we need to do division before we do addition. So we're going to go 1,500 divided by 300, which is equal to 5. Because 5 lots of 300 fit into 1,500. And then we're going to do the addition that is in from so 900 add the 5 this is 905. Question number 10 we've got 147.206 take away 95.438. First thing first so we're going to line them up so 147.206 take away 95 so your reference point should be the decimal point. There we go, the five. We can't put the tens under the hundreds, so I could have put nine under the one. And we've got then four, three, eight. 
Luna start taking away. Six take away eight. We need to borrow one to make this 16, as there aren't enough in the six. So we look at zero, but we can't borrow anything from zero. So first, we're going to try and give uh, the zero one in there to make it a 10. So zero will borrow from the two. So this becomes a one and this becomes a 10. Now I can borrow from a 10, make it a nine, and this would become 16. So 16 take away eight gives us eight. Nine take away three gives us six. Now we've got one take away four. So again, we need to borrow. So this becomes a six and this becomes 11. 11 take away four gives us seven. So six take away five gives us one. 14 take away nine gives us five. 51.768. If you want to check whether you've got it right, add in this amount and this, does it give us this one? If yes, we've got it right then. In question number 11, we've got a car can travel 480 miles on a full tank of petrol. The tank holds 60 litres. The fuel gauge shows there are 15 litres left in the tank. How many more litres can the car travel before it runs out of petrol? So 60 litres will make 480 miles. What about 15 litres? How many miles will they make? So, to get from 60 to 15, we have divided by 4. So we need to do the same thing over here, divide by 4. So 480 divided by 4. How many 4s into 4 is 1? How many 4s into 8? It's 2. Into 0 is 0. So it's 180. 20 miles. The probability that a salesperson will get an order from a visit to a customer is one quarter. She has two visits tomorrow. What's the probability that she will get orders from both visits tomorrow? Give your answer as a fraction in its simplest form. So there is the first visit, um, they could get an order or not an order. And to get an order, the probability is one quarter. To not get it is three quarters. Then, second one. So if the first person got an order, the second person could get an order or maybe not an order. So then again, the probability of them getting an order is one quarter and not getting an order is three quarters. Same thing here. Order, not order, one quarter and three quarters. So we look in for the probability that you will get orders from both visits. So that is this route. Order and then order again. So one quarter times one quarter. One sixteenth. This table shows the change in number of employees in different departments of a company compared to last year. We've got admin um, gone down by one, design, no change, production, uh, four more, packing, um, two more, warehouse, one down, marketing, three down. So we've got to work out what is the total change in the number of employees compared to last year. There are different ways you could solve this, but I would go, let's see how many has gone down for certain departments. So we've got one down and another one, two down, so five down. And we look at the positive one, so how many have gone up? increase the number of employees and we've got here four and there we've got another two six so we can see that it's gone overall it's gone up by one so they have one more employee than last year so having a look at the options it's this one a manager wants to give a pay rise to everyone who is paid less than the average salary. This table shows the annual salaries of the employees in the company. We've got their names and we've got their salary in thousands of pounds. We've got to tick all the employees who paid less than the median salary. 
first of all we need to work out the median salary I'm going to start by ordering them from the smallest to the highest from the lowest to the highest salary so I can see that 15.5 is lowest then we've got 16 then we've got 18.5 then it's 20, 22, 23, another 23, and another 23, and finally 36. So I'm going to cross them out on both sides to see what is in the middle. Then we've got 22. So anything that is lower than 22, we're going to have to tick. So we've got this 16 here. We've got 15.5, 18.5, and then 20. We can't include 22 because that is not lower than 22. So that's exactly 22. So we've got AJ, MT, RD, JR. The final question, the distance between two villages on a map measures 6 centimetres. The map has a scale of 1 to 25,000. What is the actual distance between the two villages in kilometres? So, this has become 6, because you'd have the map coming first, um, the actual measurement on the map, and then the measurement in reality so to get from 1 to 6 we've multiplied by 6 we're going to multiply by 6 as well on the other side so 25,000 times 6 6 times 0 is 0 6 times 5 is 30 6 times 2 is 12 and the 3 15 so it's 150,000 centimeters because we input centimeters so we get out centimeters there are no units attached in the actual ratio in the scale so we're going to have to convert 150,000 centimeters to kilometers. So one kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters, and one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. So we've got centimeters here, we're going to convert them to meters first. Since 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeters, we're going to divide this by 100 to get the number of meters first. So it's knocking off the two zeros. We divide it by 100. So we're going to have 1,500 meters. Now, to get into kilometers, one kilometer is 1,000 meters. Now we have 1,500. So this is dividing by 1,000. So we go 1, 2, 3, put a decimal point there. So 1.5 kilometers.